G'day and welcome back to McGrathmatics. For today's video, we're gonna take a look at the toughest question from last year's Extension 1 Maths HSC exam. Without further ado, here is the final question, question 14D. We have a particle projected from the origin. Blah, 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 proper name, place name, backstory stuff. Here is the um, displacement vector of our particle. Don't you dare prove it, you are not allowed. And we're saying that let d of t be the distance of the particle from the origin. So that's the magnitude of our displacement vector. We want to show that for this angle, our distance is always increasing. Okay, so our approach here is going to be, let's find the magnitude of this vector. The way we find the magnitude of vectors is we take the two x and y components, we square them and we add them together. And then we do that in a square root, basically a big bit of Pythagoras. So here is our distance vector or our distance calculation. Now the question says, show that this is increasing. Now the way we're gonna do that is by using our first derivative. If you wanna show something is increasing, you wanna show that the first derivative is positive. Now we wanna show that if theta is less than sine inverse of the square root of eight ninths. Okay, so before we go anywhere, let's um, simplify our expression here for distance. And then when it's simplified a bit, we can start doing some calculus. Okay, so let's maybe do our expansions here. We have vt cos theta squared, which is v squared t squared cos theta squared. Carefully expanding out our perfect squared here, we're gonna square the first term, which is v squared t squared sine squared. Then in the middle, we're going to multiply these two guys together and multiply by two. So we have two times vt sine theta times gt squared on two. And then for our last term, we're gonna square this to get g squared t to the four over four. Okay, looks like a bit of a mess. It's an absolute alphabet soup at the moment. What we can do to simplify a little bit is we can group together here we have a v squared t squared with a cos squared and a sine squared. So we can actually factor out the v squared t squared because we know the cos squared plus sine squared is equal to one. On the end here, this two and this divided by two can cancel each other out, simplifying a little bit. So we have v squared t squared. This is gonna be one and we have v g t cubed sine theta plus g squared t to the four over four. Okay, now our goal is to show that this thing as a derivative is gonna be positive. Now. Here's a useful trick for when you're dealing with a square root function and you're trying to look at the derivative. Differentiating this is gonna be a massive pain in the ass because we'll have to do like a power of a half and then we'll get like a power of a negative a half. So a cool trick here is take both sides of your equation and square it. Instead, let's analyze dt squared and let's do some calculus on this instead because it's gonna be way easier, okay? So d of t is gonna be increasing wherever d of t squared is gonna be increasing. So we are instead going to analyze the first derivative of distance squared. So we're going to go ahead and we are going to differentiate this. We're going to do the derivative with respect to time of our distance squared. Now, anything that's not a t is a constant, okay? I repeat, the v's, the g's, the sines, everything that's not a t is a constant. So for our first term, the two is going to come down the front and we're going to get two v squared t. In the middle here, um, we're going to bring the three down off the power of the t. The v, g, sine theta are just going to be chilling. We are not touching those. So we have 3 v, g, t squared sine theta. Now on the end, bringing the 4 down here is going to get rid of the 4 on the bottom of this fraction. That's going to leave us with g squared t cubed. Okay, now remember our goal was to show that this derivative is greater than 0. So how are we going to do that? Big thing we need to do here is take a step back and recognize that we have a t everywhere. There's a t cubed here, a t squared here, and a t here. t is obviously gonna be greater than zero, so we are allowed to divide by t to get this expression here. Now, what we need to do here is see that we kind of, and I know it looks like a bit of a mess right now, but what this mess is, is it's a quadratic mess. I've got a t squared here, I've got a t here, and I've got a constant here. So we're just gonna pretend this is a quadratic, which it is in terms of t. Now. We know that the g squared in front of the t squared is positive because that's what g is, it's 9.8 or whatever. So we know that this thing is positive. So we know that the parabola is concave up. So how do you show that a concave up parabola is greater than zero? We wanna show it looks something like this, concave up but never going below the x-axis. So our approach here is gonna be, well, let's just prove that this quadratic here has no solutions. Then it's concave up, it's got no solutions, which is called positive definite which looks like this, and it's always gonna be greater than zero, which is gonna be achieving our goal. So next goal is to show that our discriminants inside of our quadratic equation is negative, so that this guy has no solutions, and so it looks like this picture. Okay, so over here, our b is the minus three v g sine theta. 
our a is the g squared and our c is the 2v squared. So putting that into our formula is a bit of a mess, but anyway, there is our b squared. We have minus four times a times c. Okay, now expanding this out, we get nine v squared g squared sine squared, and then we get minus four g squared times the two, which makes it an eight, and then we have the v squared there. Okay, so we're trying to explain why this is less than zero. So what we can do is simplify a lot here. We've got a g squared on both parts that we can just vanish away. We've got a v squared on both parts that we can vanish away. So we end up with nine sine squared theta minus eight is less than zero. And now looking at the target, it looks like we're on the right track here because we can add that eight across, divide by nine, we can make some space, and then we can take the square root of both sides and say that sine theta is gonna be less than the square root of eight over nine. Um, we don't need to worry about plus minus because we are looking at theta being an acute angle because it's a projectile. So we're not gonna worry about a negative answer. It's just gonna be positive. Now we just take sine inverse and then we've pretty much done it because there we have theta is less than sine inverse of eight over nine, which was the target. When we have that result for theta, we get this result for our discriminant, which gives us this picture, which makes this quadratic always positive, which makes this derivative always positive, which makes this thing always increasing. So therefore D of T is always increasing under these conditions. And that's how we get four marks to finish off the extension one HSC exam. Oh my God, that was hectic. It was a lot of letters, a lot of fun, but thanks for you if you stuck it out with me. If you're looking for some more study for your HSC, there'll be a few more videos up before your exam. So uh, make sure you like and subscribe if you don't wanna miss them. But thanks for coming on that journey with me. Hope you had fun and I'll see you in a new video very soon. Great. I think I got it, but just in case, tell me the whole thing again, I wasn't listening. <gasps>